What's going on guys? So in front of us is our 2024 Forest River Surveyor Legend collaboration unit. This is where we collaborated with the folks over at Surveyor. You guys probably saw the video I recently posted where we swapped out the non-suspension equalizer. And when I say non-suspension equalizer, any equalizer is a suspension component. But this is a suspension equalizer specifically because it has rubber bushings that give it additional dampening effects and additional suspension characteristics. So when I say a suspension equalizer, I'm specifically talking about one that has those characteristics versus the standard solid steel equalizer that you typically see on most travel trailers whenever you buy them. So in that video, we replaced that equalizer with this equalizer. This is the Equiflex has rubber bushings on both sides and it has independent capability of each side pivoting to be able to give it some shock dampening and basically eliminate some of that shock and vibration that would typically transfer up from the ground into the chassis of the RV. I put the greasable wet bolts in from the other side so I could get easier access to the nuts. I kind of regret doing that now, mainly because as you can see from a tire size perspective, it does not interfere with the grease zerks and I would have easily been able to, have, to access those and pump grease into them from this side if I wanted. Now, a subscriber or a viewer on the channel specifically said he puts them in this way because he can go back and monitor the outside of the nuts themselves to make sure that they're not working their way loose. And I don't think that that's too much of a concern, honestly, because of the way that these nuts are designed. Once they go on, they tighten themselves down really, really good, and they're not really supposed to be super tight. So a lot of people ask me a question related to torquing these down. What's the torque specs? And according to Moride, on the instructions, I saw 40 pounds is what you're supposed to torque them down to. And a lot of people are going to be like, well, why do you only torque them down to 40 pounds? It doesn't seem like much for a suspension component. The main reason why are because these are shoulder bolts. And let me explain what I'm talking about. So this is what the wet bolt looks like, right? You see how it has this shoulder, or this edge right here. So basically, once you tighten this nut down onto it, it's going to stop right there regardless. These aren't designed to be compressed together really tight like you might normally fasten a bolt with a nut. These are designed to essentially stop when they get to this point. And if you look at the nut itself, you can see how it has these areas on each end that they've pressed. And it's only on two ends right here, which actually makes the opening more of an oval shape. So once this goes down, it tightens into place and it's gonna hug that shoulder right there. So your torque specifications are simply to make sure that this bolt and this nut are seated together properly all the way to the end here. So that's why I've never actually torqued down these to any specification whenever we put them on. And I would argue to say almost every video I've ever seen, whether it's a manufacturer's video or whether it's a video of just an owner putting it on their own RV, I've never actually seen someone torque these down with a torque wrench. I'm not saying that it doesn't make sense to do it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying industry-wide, I've never actually seen it done. Even when I've been at repair shops or service centers where they've upgraded the suspension, they usually just take an impact driver, put it all the way down, make sure it's seated, and you're usually good to go. But again, from a safety perspective, you should always torque things down. Again, I just haven't ever seen anybody do it whenever they put these on because once this nut seats tight against that shoulder right there, it's not gonna go anywhere. It can't go any further anyways. It's not as if you're tightening it down to compress this up against something. You're basically tightening it down just to seat against that edge. Okay, so we're back out here at the suspension. The next question people asked me was related to the other end. Well, did I replace the bolts back here with wet bolts and bronze bushings as well? And the answer is I didn't. And this is usually an area that I don't do that to. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I have the greasable wet bolts to put in there. I have the bronze bushings. But because of how this is designed, you're less likely to experience a failure on this side as you would on this side. There's far more movement taking place here. Everything's moving and it moves a lot. Even very, very incremental bumps make movement occur right here. These end pieces, these shackle straps and hangers are moving in and out like this. This whole assembly is moving side to side. It's jostling up and down. There's all sorts of micro movements that take place as well just from going down a smooth road. This is always moving and it's moving quite a bit. On this side, it's moving in a different way. It's static. This piece right here isn't gonna move and the one eyelid on the other side is basically making kind of one rotating hinge effect. It's not actually doing much other than holding it and securing it in place on this side. There's a little bit of movement here, but not nearly as much as the other side. 
Now, does this mean I should have put a greasable wet bolt here? You know, I think it would usually be best practice to do it, but for me, I don't put a lot of focus back here other than to inspect it to make sure everything's working well. Another reason for that is because the weight and the pressure that is being applied to this bolt is upwards pressure right here, which means if this spring hanger starts to wear away, it has to wear away up through all this material, which is very unlikely. And if you start to see this hole in the long gate, so you can actually see the bottom opening of the hole, well then there's definitely repairs that need to be done. And that's definitely an area to focus some attention on. But over here, your shackle hangers right here, if you can see, the weight is actually gonna be pulling this way and the weight's gonna be pulling this way. So basically it's pulling this bracket apart, which means that if I had a lighter duty shackle strap here and it started wearing, it would be a small amount of material here before it broke and it would be a small amount of material here before it broke. Essentially, this shackle hanger is pulling down this way and pulling up this way, which means the only amount of material that it has to work through is this relatively small amount on each side of the bolt. And that's the reason why I think it's more important that you put an upgraded system right here. I don't think it's as critically important on the other side, again, just because of how it's designed. But right here is definitely one of those areas where you want to limit how much wear. Again, this is another example of it. Even if this starts to wear, it's going to start wearing upwards into a much longer piece of steel and you'll start to see when that wear is occurring. And that's just because there's downward force on the RV, which means there's upward pressure on this bolt. But on the shackle hangers, again, there's upward force on this side and there's downward force on this side, which make these more critical. And that's the reason why I generally just replace this section right here from a practical perspective. I do have the bolts. I could put them in the other end of the spring eyelets. It's just an area I don't focus a heck of a lot of attention to unless I see something happening that makes me refocus my attention back there. Anyways, those were the two big questions. Aside from the fact that people wanted to know, does this really help? It absolutely helps. Where it helps the most are gonna be those micro movements, those smaller movements. Whenever you're going down the road and there's small little bumps on the road and the RV doesn't feel like it's moving a lot, but that micro vibration, that micro movement is transferring into the components and it's being dampened by those rubber bushings before it makes its way into the RV and starts loosening things up, starts making crown molding fall, starts damaging electronics starts knocking things over inside of the RV. Is the suspension equalizer going to be super helpful if you take the RV off-roading? It will probably add some significant shock dampening to the chassis, but it's not going to keep things from falling over and it's not going to make a huge, huge difference if you're going over giant potholes or if you're going over super large obstructions in the road or off-roading with it. It's not going to make a huge difference. Where things like that come in really handy is when you're just simply pulling it down the highway and you want some of the subtle vibrations from moving into the RV. Another question people have had for me is, am I going to balance the tires on this. Absolutely. I always recommend getting them balanced. Take it over to your discount tire or whoever works on trailers in your area and balance those for you. Again, just think about the fact of why we balance vehicle tires because we want to get rid of that, that vibration, that awkward tire wear. That's also what you're getting on an RV, but you're just not sitting inside of your towable RV to feel it. It's still happening though. And anytime you can reduce that type of vibration, that type of wobbling, that type of shock transfer from the ground to the chassis of your RV, that's always a good thing. So I definitely recommend getting your tires balanced on your RV. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. I like to do these update videos because I think it answers the questions that people typically ask. Big upgrade, definitely recommend it. Balance your tires. Wet bolts for me are more important on the center equalization area versus the end of the spring eyelets. Even though if you have them and you wanna put them on, you can put them on. For me, it's not as big of a deal to put them on the outsides. And then from a greasable wet bolt perspective, I should have flipped the bolts around the other way when I did it. Who knows, I may take a closer look at all this at a later time and, and redo some of it. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.